Rockhold has this air of invincibility, never more confident. Congrats to Michael and Kami. I just didn't see it happen, and you know, I, uh, I took him for granted. Do you feel that you came into this fight overconfident? A bit, yeah, you know, I, uh, I could have capitalized and, and fought my fight, you know, rather than playing around with him. Luke Rockhold seemed to have it all. An exceptionally well-rounded skill set, good striking, great on the ground, a top-notch athlete with non-stop cardio. On top of that, the man's an Adonis, making women everywhere just slide right out of their suits. He's extremely comfortable in his own skin. He's even great in interviews. I'm a profile. I'm a precise. I'm a precise. The three of us. Yeah. Let me. Uh, is, is, is. You know, he, he coming in, coming in. So and so paid. Pay, 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 pay. Well, shit. I guess you can't have it all. I gotta let him expose himself. You're gonna feel me on the ground. You're gonna feel me everywhere. I'm gonna feel you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna feel it up. I'm gonna keep coming. All the way till November 6th. I'm not here for anything small. Just the big stuff. Let's go get that ass. I take it back. His interviews are hilarious. But as confident and as great as Luke was, he had a bit of arrogance that rubbed some fans the wrong way. Anderson Silva is not on my level. He never was. <laughs> Luke came to the UFC after Zufa acquired Strikeforce. He was on a nine-fight win streak, which included him capturing the Strikeforce middleweight title. In his UFC debut, he was matched up with TRT Vitor Belfort, a fight which ended in him getting knocked out by spinning back kick to the dome. This was a strange time in the sport where TRT was somehow legal and Vitor was the poster child for it. After that loss, Rockhold plowed through the division like it was Demi Lovato, winning five fights in a row capturing the UFC middleweight title from Chris Wyman. The UFC scheduled a rematch for Luke Rockhold versus Chris Wyman to take place at UFC 199. However, Wyman was injured a couple weeks before the fight. Jacare was initially offered the fight, but Michael Bisbee ended up being the one who got it. Poor Jacare. It's bad enough that he can't even get the fans to do his gator clap with him. Wyman didn't have a chance and he doesn't have a chance. None of these guys have a chance. The new main event was set. Bisbee had everything to gain and nothing to lose. While Luke had... what the hell is that? Balls was hot. Super necessary. Is there a way to be confident without coming off too cocky to some people? Do you, do you even care if some people see you that way? I think people have always been drawn away from confidence for some reason that people are haters. They want to see you lose. Some people strive to achieve things and some people strive to hate. You know, if you think something, the likelihood of it happening is very slim. If you believe in something, if you know something is going to happen, if you're confident in that situation, you will achieve things in life. That's how you overcome things. That's how you put yourself out there. You believe it and you achieve it. And that's what I do. I know what I'm going to do. I know that I'm better than this. Sounds like I the know worst self-help book you've ever read. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f*** up. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. You're talking like you're like this dominant champion. You, you just won the belt. This is your first defense. It's not like you're Anderson Silva, who I just beat, by the way. Okay? This is your first defense. You're going to lose the belt. And just watch get the used difference. To it. Watch the difference what happens. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'll separate myself listen, from the back. I'll listen, show real, you everybody and the world knows that I'm that much you better than you fight. and Anderson. Everybody here knows you won the first fight. Congratulations. Yeah. Good job. Every watch. fight is different, my friend. Every fight is different. You know that. Hey. So, what? You, you, you got something to say? Finish your sentence. You said, Busy. hey. You're just an Finish average it. bloke. You're just an average bloke. Good use of English terminology. I'm a terminology. fucking samurai. I'm going to oh, come in there silent, the undetected, this? and I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to make my believe, kill, achieve, and I'm going to fucking stop be it. out. You're making a fool I'll be out on yourself. the next contract. Watch me. All right, buddy. All right, listen. What are you going to do? Silent. Kick. Undetected. A left done. Kick, a right hook. That's all you got. Next. So predictable. I get to walk in on two weeks you. notice. I get to punch him in the face and become world champion at the same time. I am a happy man. Yeah, Michael, it's I, my destiny. I actually wanted to ask you. Yeah, it is. You just said, believe it. It will come real. It is my destiny. I believe, Luke. You I believe. Something. I f knocked you out and choked you out, and you still have hey, the audacity hey, 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 to hey, run your good mouth. Good for you. Good. For, you did. You that is me. the most amazing not, thing about you, Bisbee. Hey, 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 I'm not denying it. You I know you can't me. see it's straight, but you obviously can't think straight it, either. It, it, 
Luke says that he's on a different level to everybody else and that he's by far the best fighter and he can destroy anybody and this, that and the other. Well, if that is the case, then it turns out that he's a liar because the guy has a bit of vagina inside him because he turned down uh, Ronaldo, Jacare, whatever his name is. I chose you. Two I, weeks notice. So, so you did turn down Jacare. Two weeks notice. You did turn down Jacare because you're not denying that. I didn't turn down Jacare. I said I chose you. Oh, okay. Okay. So you chose me. Well, you not, chose wrong, like right, I said. Yeah, yeah. Dana, you said originally that uh, Jacare was the first call and he couldn't take this fight. But seeing what you're seeing right here, should Michael Bisping have been the first call? Well, I was on the phone with Mike, too, at the same time. I, Mike knew that this was going on. And uh, obviously, I was talking to, uh, to Luke, too. So... Mike was, was always... Uh... Sorry to interrupt, but Luke didn't want the Jack Ray fight. He didn't I want it. He Mike. chose me. Hey, he I chose. Know, I... That's a real good way exactly. of saying I turned it down. I chose you. He didn't choose Jack Ray. Thought you were the big dog. I was waiting. Thought you were the big hey, swinging dick, man. Jack You're Ray the best in the world, last... buddy. Jack Ray didn't You're fight. You're the best, but I choose Bisping. Yeah, he's on a movie set. Let's pick him. Pick the easy fight. Picked wrong. I, I commend you, because you will come fight. And you, will, you do got balls, but you're going to fall... Far short. I've never turned down an opponent, and Dana will um, back me up on that. I've never said no to anyone, buddy. You've only been in the UFC two minutes. Granted, you're the champion, but you're already turning fights down. Come on, man. Get a grip. It's supposed to be the world down. champion. I didn't turn any fight Anyone, down. Anyone, anytime, any place. I didn't turn any you fight said down. No, you chose me. I already beat you. All right, buddy. I already beat him. You're right, I buddy. Beat everybody else. Your career, your, your, your reputation is diminished. I don't see myself losing anytime soon. I got a lot of things. A lot of. A lot of goals, a lot of Of course, of I'm supposed we'll to see, jump we'll in see, here. We'll see who shows you know, up. And say, yes, you are on Saturday night. But good for you. He's supposed to have that confidence. I can't, I, you know, well done. Well done. Good for you. You're on another level, but you're turning down Jack Array. Now, I got to hand it to Bisbean for how he approached his trash talk. The best method is to say things based on truth. For example, like what Connor said to Dustin in their first fight. I goose the wind and he does the chicken dance. You know what I mean? <laughs> That was a solid dig because it was funny and based on some truth. At 145, Dustin had gotten wobbled a few times. It's not like Bisbean could make fun of Luke for losing to Vitor since he got starched by him as well. So with Rockhold being the talented champion who already had a win over Bisbean, Mike had to find another angle. Which was Bisbean pushing the narrative that Luke choosing him must have meant that he wanted no part of Jacare. Which sounds ridiculous to a degree, yet it worked because Luke really doesn't possess the quick-witted skills for a decent rebuttal. I already beat you, right, but I already beat him, You're right, I already buddy. beat everybody else. All Luke really had to do was call out Bisbean's tactic and add an insult. Imagine if Luke would have said something like, So, so if I would have picked Jacare, Jacare, would that have meant I was afraid of you, of you despite me already, already whooping both, both your asses? asses? Your, your logic, logic is as flawed as your vision there, Snake, Snake Plissken. Hell, just hit him back with some one-eyed references every time he tries you. You're on another level, but you're turning down Jackery. This, this is, is one, one piece of gold you're, you're not, not taking, taking back to that, that ship, ship one-eyed Willie. Willie. Luke Rockhold and Chris Weidman couldn't sell a fight. They couldn't sell water to a thirsty man in a desert, right? I can sell sand to an Arab. I'm going to knock him out. He's going to be led on the floor. He's going to look up the stars and think, I just lost my belt to somebody that came in on two weeks notice. How's that going to feel, Luke? I'm going to knock you out every time we fight. Absolutely incorrect, my friend. Listen, you're already making excuses. You're talking about your knee. You're saying they're injured. You're feathering no, I'm the just nest making my for win. your loss. I'm just making my win that much better is what yeah, I'm okay. doing. Yeah, okay. You're feathering the nest for your loss to cushion the impact. I'm just better. I'm just, I'm just going to put an exclamation mark on this one. Okay, well, you said that last time. Last time you said first round and... and what, are they, what do you, you want? What does anybody want round? from me? I knocked you out and choked you out. You turned down Jack Array. I asked for you on two weeks' notice. I didn't know I such asked thing. for you on two weeks' notice, buddy. That's how high my confidence is. You got nothing to lose. I tore my MCL about 12 weeks out. Um, I was able to start kicking with my left leg last uh, week. Last week? Listen, on your Instagram, so. you've been kicking pads and showing off and doing stupid <laughs> for a while, but yet you're saying that you haven't kicked your whole camp, so it sounds like you're lying again. I'm going to smash you right in the face. I don't need to kick. I don't need to grapple. Okay, I can beat good. all these you guys. In the moment, I will fight my fight and I will quick. win my fights. You turned into a wrestler pretty quick, buddy. So, uh, you know, go for the takedown. I knocked you out. Go for it. It doesn't matter if I wrestle. If I, if I clinch fight you for a second, I knocked you out. Do whatever the f*** 
you want to do, buddy. Give it a try. Give it a try. I'm going to knock you out again. We'll see. We'll it's see. It's going to be freaking flawless. There's only one guy getting knocked out, mate, and that's you. Flawless. Believe you me. Mark my words. Mark my words. Both eyes. Shut. Come on, buddy. Let's see what you got. Bring it. Mr. Destiny pulled it off, knocking Luke out in the first round. Some people think it's because Luke took him lightly. Others believe it was because Bisbean found a flaw in Rockhold's game. I say it's a little bit of both. When I was watching Luke, you know, we watched a bit of tape and everything. every time he does something, he drops his right hand, you know. He was even doing some video on Instagram where he's doing this thing and his, his right hand drops. You drop your right hand all the time, buddy. So I was like, left hook, left hook all day long. Bisbing was right when he mentioned that Luke drops his right hand, but he had the same flaw in their first fight. Mike just wasn't able to capitalize on it because Luke respected Bisbing in that first contest, using head movement and footwork to slide out of the way of possible counters. In the rematch, Luke appeared to be a bit lazy with his movements, which on top of his flaw of not covering up after he throws made Bisbing successful when he threw his left hook the second time. Bisbing's a tough dude. I've always said it. You know, he's a warrior. He'll, he'll hang in there, but I just... Obviously, I didn't respect him enough. I was over committing. I tried something I, I usually normally don't do. I usually don't commit with a jab. I take my time and I work my way in. I got caught. When you defeated Chris Weidman, <clears throat> he had said something to the effect of he was really frustrated at losing the belt to you in particular. Uh, <laughs> Try losing it to Michael Bisbee. That's what I was going to ask you. How do you feel? God, <laughs> that guy is such a dick. That guy is a piece of shit. And I want to come kill him next time around. Come, and, come to me and saying like that, that those are true colors. Yeah. Michael, I'll, I'll bring you up to speed, Michael. Um, I just asked Luke if it stung any extra uh, degree in losing the belt to you, and he has said emphatically, yes, it did. Um, I'm curious, how do you feel uh, getting revenge? Uh, oh, you know, I don't know. Some say revenge is sweet. I disagree. I think it's better than sweet. Luke. When the shoe was on the other foot, I leaned over and thanked you at this moment in time. I said, well done. And I actually picked you up off the canvas. And you, being the dick you are, came up to me and was a bitch I shook your it. hand. And, and you said, I already shook your hand and told me to fuck off, basically. You asked me, do you know who you are? Do you know where you are, buddy? Yeah, oh. that's after you. Yeah. Hey, buddy, you, you got knocked the fuck dick. out. Hey. You got knocked out, buddy. Sit down, shut up. You got up. lucky. All right. You oh, lucky. yeah. Real lucky. Business. First round, buddy. First round. Hey, hey, hey. How's that jet lag? You buddy? enjoy your short-lived destiny, my friend. All right. Yeah, yeah, it is my destiny. Mark my words. It is my destiny, not your destiny. If I go out there and I fight my fight, this man can't compete with me. You know, I, I, I'll prove that anytime. Are you I will, did I, will I just be hear back. you say I, I can't compete back. with you? Is that what I heard, everybody? If I, do, if I do my Is that thing. what I heard? Did I, I was talking to you, Raya, and saying, well done. Is that what I heard? When we're man-to-man -man in the cage, we, shoot, we saw your true colors. We see who you are. You just said I can't compete with you. I just knocked you out in the first round. Cold. Have you seen that replay, buddy? Your head was bouncing around like a pinball machine. I watched it. Yeah, yeah, watch it again. Obviously, it didn't sink in. Can you talk about what was going through your mind as the fight was playing out? Because it seemed like he was walking forward and showing you very little respect for your striking. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have respect. You know, he doesn't have respect for many people, you know. So, uh, I think he might have respect now. You know, he might have a little bit of respect. Look, Bisbing's a dick, but he's a warrior and he's tough and he's going to hang in there. I gave him an opportunity, and he made the most of it. Giving me an opportunity will be the end of it. And I think, I, I think I've earned mine, but I will do whatever I need to do. But it, it will be a, a short-lived destiny, I promise you. You just can't let it go, can you? You just can't let it go. How are those lemons taste? Uh, and for the record, that fight went just down like the sparring session that, you know, that is famous. So it's kind of 2-1, really. The loss to Bisbean would change Rockhold forever. Not only would it affect his confidence with his ability to take a punch, but the perception of Luke had also changed amongst other fighters. You see, it's one thing to get knocked out by TRT Vitor. There was no shame in that loss, but when he got knocked out by Bisbean, the world viewed Luke differently. Even though he was a striking-based fighter, Bisbean was never viewed as a one-punch knockout artist. Despite all of his previous accomplishments, the new perception of Luke was that he had a weak chin. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. You've seen the memes and heard the fighters talk about Luke's chin. One of them being his next opponent, David Branch. He can't box, and he doesn't have a chin. During their fight, Luke got clipped by a barrage of punches, but survived and ended up making Branch tap to strikes in the second round. This propelled Luke to face Robert Whitaker for the middleweight championship, but Rob got injured leading into their fight. Yoel Romero ended up stepping in, and now it would be Luke versus Yoel for the interim title. You know, I, I believe... Yoel, if I'm patient, he'll expose himself. 
and that's what I'm that's what I'm going to count on. I'm going to wait for him. I'm going to pick him off on the outside, and he's going to have to come in. And when he comes in, I'm going to have to make him pay. And uh, you know, I'm going to force him out of his comfort zone, and I'm going to force him to a place he doesn't want to be. This is not wrestling. This is mixed martial arts. And when it comes to grappling, I'm the best. Yoel will find his, himself in trouble everywhere that fight goes. If he wants to tangle with me on the ground, I'm like no one he's ever grappled with. I, I promise you I will be on top. I will be above him. Anytime I'm above him, I will be winning. There's no threat on Yoel. I can scramble. I can grapple. If he, wants to, if he ends up on bottom, I'll take the life out of him. He can't compete with me on the ground. And he'll, he'll learn. He'll, he'll, he'll find that out shortly. You know, Yoel is a, you know, he calls himself the soldier of God. Yet he talks about crippling and hosp hospitalizing his opponents. That makes it all that more real. You know, I, I don't, I'm not, we're not playing games. This is for keeps. This is the real f***ing deal. I've dropped more people <coughs> than, than him with my right hook and my shot's coming forward. I'm a defensive striker. Uh, David Branch almost hit a few and almost put him down. So Yoel wants to take that risk, run forward. He could eat some just as easy. Everyone's got a button. Everyone's been touched. Everyone get dropped. You know, Tim Kennedy put him out. So, uh, you know, he's, he's got to be aware of that. I'm not, I'm not no slouch going backwards, coming forwards. I can fight you anywhere and everywhere. You run risks when you run forward like an idiot. I think Yoel's body has limitations. His body, like, a body like that can only be built to go so, so hard and so long. Those explosions will get less and less as the fight goes on. And so I have to contain that. Uh, if I don't catch him early, you know, he, he coming, coming in sloppy, coming in crazy. Um, this fight's going to dramatically change. I beat him on the feet. I beat him on the ground. I just got to be relaxed. I got to be patient. I got to let him expose himself. I, I got this fight. If I just, I just got to be straight, be smart. I'm going to own him from start to finish. In the beginning, the fight was going pretty much like Luke anticipated, with Rockhold being patient, picking his shots, waiting for Yoel to make a mistake. Yet it seemed like Luke had underestimated the speed and durability of Romero, on top of him not being as comfortable as he once was before the Bisbee knockout with fighters pressuring him more so than they did before, thinking his chin wouldn't be able to handle a shot if it connects. Yoel ends up timing an overhand left as Luke was trying to connect with his check right hook, ending the fight in the third round. I love you! With Luke getting older and being knocked out twice in his last few fights, he figured it was time to move up to light heavyweight, knowing that not cutting as much weight would help him absorb strikes better, while the flip side would be him facing bigger guys who hit harder. Luke was scheduled to face Jan Blahovich at UFC 239. Papa's got a brand new bag in this division. Hold on, let me get my dick out. Don't act like it's just me. There's not a soft cock in that room. I'm excited. No for cages. Jan is 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 all we could get. And I was I was looking for everything and more at light heavyweight. And light heavyweight is kind of a it's a scarce division of, of names and of real talent. You know, people with substance. There's nothing to say about Jan Blockwitz. It's like you want me to do these interviews. What am I supposed to say? He's stiff. He's slow. And he's not technical. So that's that's Jan. He's top ranked guy. The highest ranked guy I could get. Jan can't go for one round if I keep the pace. Jan is, uh, he's naive. He's, he doesn't see the big picture, and we'll see. We're going we're gonna to show him the big picture. Fun stuff. I just have to, I got to fight smarter. I got to be tactical. I got to put him in a bad space. You know, he's, he's a straightforward fighter. He's not technical. He's not, he's not very, he's not fluid. He's stiff. He uses his strength. He blows himself out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work my way around him. I'm going to expose him. Some fighters don't like talking about this, but you know, I want to bring it up, is that do you, how, do, how do you think it'll affect your ability to take a punch? Because for a long time, we didn't think of you as a guy who, who you know, had trouble taking a punch. And then it seems like in the last few fights, that's been a, a concern maybe, is that like, is Luke's ability to take a punch compromised? And weight cut could, could play into that. Do you think that at 205, you'll, have, you'll be more durable? I've never been knocked down in the gym. The only time it's ever happened in a fight, so. I can take shots. Thanks, small feet. You will not feel it.
company's not able to stay awake while he's at work. Different divisions, same result. It seemed that the problem wasn't Luke cutting too much weight, it was that his best days were behind him. He didn't move like he used to and doesn't react well to getting hit anymore, which has been historically proven time and time again with aging fighters. I think Luke Rockhold should talk about hanging it up. You know, he broke his jaw tonight. So that's the second broken jaw. He's been knocked out viciously a few times here. Shin is all banged up. He had to have uh, skin graft and all kinds of stuff. Just he's had a good career. He's been a great fighter. I'd like to I'd like to see him hang it up. And he's got another he's got another career that he's actually doing well at. It's not like he's like everybody's a fucking model, right? I'm a model. I'm a model. That guy's actually really modeling for Ralph Lauren. So um, good for him. You also tweeted that you're the best looking man ever. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> who disagree? No, you're not fucked up, Tom. I've been dropped. I'm a man, and I will never break to a man like Paulo Costa. I've given every day to this, every day to being the best man I can be. The best athlete, the best mentally, physically, every preparation to get to this fucking point. I don't need anything else other than the man's in front of me, and he's trying to take my heart my fucking will and my dreams and my fucking preparation, I'm a man. And this is about who the fucking bigger man is and I'm not gonna bow down to no man. I don't need that. I'm gonna be present, I'm gonna be focused, I'm gonna be patient, I'm gonna wait for my attack, I'm gonna kill this motherfucker. A lot of fans wondered what started the feud between Luke and Paulo. Well, I have the answer, and as I already teased in the beginning of this segment, it basically comes down to Luke having hot girl energy. Think about it, there's no real reason for Luke to dislike Paulo. Who cares if he didn't make weight against Marvin Vittori? Sure, it was unprofessional, but all Luke wanted to do was nag him calling him saddlebags. In case some of you didn't already know, some fighters have huge egos. Cody Garbrandt once punched a wall because he claimed it looked at him the wrong way. Luke's issue is that he must be the best looking man within a thousand mile radius or he'll shit a brick. When Costa claimed he was the best looking man ever and Luke didn't see much pushback from it, he was irate, firing his publicist and his modeling agent while also burning his magazine covers, shouting that Paulo was taking everything he worked for. After not being able to sleep for three weeks, Luke called Dana saying he wanted Paulo for his comeback fight. One thing about Luke Rocco, people think you're arrogant. Yeah. Do you think the arrogance cost you in some of those biggest moments? Because you you can be, at I, times you can come off as a bit dismissive. I think with of Bisbing, the people with Bisbing. Yeah. The second time around with Bisbing, I was I was arrogance, mm -hmm. arrogance and stupidity, and just coming forward, you know. When you say I'm coming back, we're all for it. Then you say you want Paulo Costa, and we're like, I, okay, I support you. I've said it publicly. I don't know why he's so intent on that fight, but then you come at Paulo Costa almost like you're almost dismissive of him. Back in the first fight when I fought Bisbee, I'm the same fucking cocky asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's a difference when you check yourself when you get into that fight. Yeah. I mean, we're in the fight game. We're performers. We're, we're show off. Anything can happen. We're arrogance. Well, this is what we do. We like to fucking perform. We like to show off. We like to be cocky. Same as you. We all do it. the same thing. Anybody, any, anybody who wants greatness yeah. has that cockiness. When you were running through the strike force division, guys couldn't touch you. But then it seemed like whenever Bisbee hit you, and he got the finish. People started thinking to themselves, oh my God, if I can hit him, I can hurt him, yeah. right? In the time away, have you done anything defensively to ensure that that doesn't happen anymore? And do you feel like the chin's been a bit refreshed? The wars that we all had in the gym, where we're punching each other hard, we're kicking each other hard, it takes a toll on the chin. Mm -hmm. In the time away, like, have you, you feel like that you can take a shot a little better? Or, or like, are you, are you just kind of saying, you know what? I'm going to be better, more responsible defensively to where people can't hit me anymore. Bisping, I think, was more of a perfect spot. Yeah. Like perfect time kind of thing. Yes. Okay. David Branch, did I get hurt? I don't think so. I got hit with some big shots, too. Yoel Romero. Okay, Yoel Romero, one of the hardest hitting guys in the history of... Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, I'm locked with. Okay, one of the hardest hitting guys in the history of... You're not losing the guys that can't pop. I mean, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm like, yeah, I, all right. I went down, I went down. But I, I still know I can take a shot. I don't like him. First of all, I don't, I don't like Paul Acosta. <laughs> Why? Why? I don't think anybody in the Yo, right what's up way, with his hair? Any decent man in the <laughs> world, like, like, you look at the guy. I lie, you, I mean, he's okay. He's a nice guy, enough guy, guy, though. You look at the guy, and he's just like,
It was pretty cool to see DC talk to Luke about things that most say behind his back, like his arrogance and his chin. The reality was that Luke had grown deeply insecure now that he had gotten older, thinking that he'll not only age out of fighting, but modeling as well. Who am I kidding? Luke's still a prison prize. At the uh, media day yesterday, Paolo wasn't very impressed with your jiu-jitsu. I'm curious, do you believe you have the grappling advantage in this fight? I'll treat Paolo like a bitch if he gets to the ground. It'll be over. I am on my prime time. I will f*** this old man on the Saturday. And he is visibly uncomfortable because he knows he will face a monster. And he knows already. I look for him. He's not comfortable. I will, I will make, you know, I, I, I believe UFC you you give listen. a good you don't gift deal with it. You've for retired this adversity. guy, and I will retire his on Saturday. Hey, have you ever dealt with adversity? The one time you met adversity, you missed weight by 20 pounds. <laughs> Are you surprised that Luke is bringing this energy to you today? Energy? No. The energy... He doesn't even know what fucking energy means. The mother... His girlfriend is doing every thought process for him. The energy doesn't matter on the, on the, on the, the day of the fight. You know, he can say this bullshit. I think don't fit on, on an old man like he is. But uh, the energy... Did your, did your girlfriend tell you that? This guy, this guy is, is too old to, to say this kind of bullshit. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Look, You're the one that's wearing glasses, mother... Can you see shit? You've been doing cosmetics this whole thing. I was surprised you're looking the, the same. I thought you'd be Kylie Jenner. You are too old to see this kind of bullshit, man. Hey, this motherfucker didn't want to take the fight in the first did. place. The UFC forced it down his throat. They needed to delay it twice. Month after month, all the cosmetic bullshit you got done. You little bitch, shut up. I'm here. I'm fighting one of the baddest motherfuckers. I get through him. What's next? If they don't give it to me, see ya. I don't need shit. Who's he fought? When, when is the last time he fought? You can't just fight Against Costa. Jan. Oh, nah, you know. You gotta do some more. Show me something. Many fans believe that this fight was guaranteed to have another Rockhold knockout, which I get because Costa's a hard hitter, but he's not accurate. If you look at his finishes, almost all of them are by TKO. He usually breaks people with an accumulation of strikes. He's not really a one-punch knockout artist that finds people's chins, which was Luke's kryptonite. We know Bisbean wasn't one either, but I had faith that Luke could survive against Costa in a three-round fight. Despite the three-year layoff and showing his age, Luke fought like a warrior. The man had his hands on his knees by the end of the first round, yet he stuck it out and even landed some hard shots that rock Paulo. By the end of the fight, Luke gave Paulo a taste of his blood like an elder vampire passing along his genetic gifts. Rockhold would lose by decision, but DC said it best about Luke getting love from the fans at a level that he had never had before. I gave it my all, and I just didn't. I'm old. <laughs> but Luke, I'll tell you what you have. You have heart and courage like no one else. That was an amazing display of perseverance and guts and courage and the will to win. And it was awesome to watch. And if this is the last fight you have inside the Octagon, thank you very much for an incredible career. It's been an honor to call your fights. Thank you. I appreciate you very much. I love you, boy. Luke Rockhold, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for a legend. Although Luke had a legendary career, I can't help but think how much better it could have been if he didn't dismiss Bisbean's chances in their rematch. You've got to think that there's a little bit of bitterness in Luke knowing that his reign as champ was short-lived. Even though Luke's time as a fighter appears to be over, the man has plenty of options. Whether it's more modeling work or even being an author. Hell, he'd be perfect for the Zoolander reboot. As for him and Bisbean's relationship, they've patched things up and are getting along now.
However, Bisbee still gloats from time to time. <laughs> I gotta let him expose himself. I'll feel it up. I'm not here for anything small. Just the big stuff. Let's go get that ass.